Hey YouTube, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be giving a general description of the Bible's linguistic and historical nature and discussing how this nature sets a course for the proper interpretation of the biblical text. While you're here, I'd like to ask you to take a moment to please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. The Bible was originally written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Translating the original text into different languages that we use was a huge and difficult task, but was completed, in most cases, brilliantly by very dedicated people under the direction of the Holy Spirit. They had to figure out what the original words meant, how the sentences were structured, and how to best translate them into other languages. For example, there are different meanings for the word love, so it's important to translate the right meaning when going from one language to another. Sometimes I say that I love coconut water, but then I also say that I love God. Well, obviously I don't love coconut water in the same way that I love God. In the Greek, there are four different kinds of love that I would like to discuss. There's eros, storge, phileo, and agape. Eros love is a sexual love. It's where we get our word erotic from. Storge love is natural affection between family members. Phileo love is natural affection with more feelings and reason to an individual or an ob object, such as coconut water <laughs> or a wristwatch. And agape love is an action. It's a verb instead of a feeling to love the undeserving without condition. You know that you don't actually have to like somebody in order to love them. You can always show goodwill to somebody despite rejection or disappointment. Loving somebody who may not necessarily deserve it, that is agape love, unconditional love. That's agape love, yes, unconditional love. Erotic love is all about the ego. It's me, 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 I, I, I. My first consideration is myself. Philia love is mutualistic. It says it'll give as long as I receive. I'll love you as long as I'm getting your, the, the reciprocation and I'm getting something that I want. Agopic love, on the other hand, is altruistic saying, I will give requiring nothing in return. As you can see, it's important to get the right meaning of the word love when translating scripture from one language into another and to properly interpret the meaning of the text. God's work continues to this day because do you know that more than half, half of the world's languages do not have the Bible translated into them yet? We need to get at least the book of John translated into these languages immediately this really should keep us tossing and turning awake at night. This is an emergency, and may God build his team of faithful servants to accomplish this task of finding translators. Translating the Bible from the culture when it was written into the culture of today is sometimes seen as difficult. There are some aha moments when we begin to understand the culture of the time period that helps us to understand the deep truths of the Bible. You know, oftentimes this, plaint is, this complaint is over-exaggerated by people who are comfortable with the false notion that the Bible is too hard to understand, and they use that as an excuse not to read it. If this applies to you, please do not be offended by what I just said. Rather, be encouraged to the fact that you can understand the Bible if you will take the time to read it. I promise you will be blessed if you do. Because the Bible was written in another language and culture is one reason why people claim the Bible is irrelevant to our lives. So then with that, along that line of thought, they compartmentalize the Bible versus modern thinking. There is nothing more false, as I'm going to show you. All of the issues that the Bible talks about are the most important issues that we deal with as humans today. Solomon himself wrote that there is nothing new under the sun. It has all been done before and history repeats itself. The questions and issues of old 
are in fact the same questions and issues that we struggle with today. And the answers are only found in the Bible. The questions are, where did we come from? What is the meaning of life? Who is our creator and can we know him? Where are we going? Why is there so much suffering in the world? This isn't fair. What happens when we die? How can I make a difference in the big scheme of things and leave a mark on humanity, on, hum, on humanity during my time while I'm alive? God gave us the answers to each and every one of these issues through the people who wrote the Bible. God spoke through the very experiences of the people he used to write the Bible as they lived life and connected with him. The Bible is packed full of true narratives Songs, poetry, visions, prophecy, promises, and heart cries of God's people who lived their lives before we were even a sparkle in our parents' eyes. It is because there is nothing new under the sun that the Bible is totally relevant to life in any time, place, or language. The Bible does not teach us a religion, but rather a relationship with our Creator and how we are going to live life because of that relationship with him. When we realize how our life fits in with the big scheme of things, we can begin to really live outside of our own selfish little world. I submit to you that people who don't read the Bible because of cultural and linguistic differences are missing out. Whatever reason people don't pick up and read the Bible, they're missing out. I want to encourage you, please pick up your Bible and read it. It's God's love letter to you. Sure, there are things that will help us to understand the Bible better as we learn about the culture of the day, but we can all start by simply reading the Bible today. In fact, I have found that many of the cultural traditions of the Old Testament days are explained in the text. No matter the time, place, or language, people everywhere are all in the same situation as human beings, and the answer to all of the questions that we have about who we are and who God is are only found in the pages of the Bible. Pick it up, read it, and just savor every word. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel. God bless you, and I hope to see you next time.